guys, this is Caleb with DSLR Video Shooter and today we're gonna add a little spice, a little texture, a little 1970s wood grain to your videos by making some light leaks. Now, you've probably seen these in the past on other people's videos. Essentially, it looks like little flares or light leaks on their video and it looks kind of natural because often optics will have this kind of problem or artifact if you will and we can actually make them very easily and there's all kinds of different ways to get custom looks and you can make them on your own so with that out of the way let's talk about what you need to make these light leaks obviously you'll need a camera i'd recommend a tripod but you could also just set your camera on a table the next thing we need is a light source you could do this outdoors, but I'd really recommend some kind of either a video light or just use your phone's built-in little flash and uh, that'll do the trick. The next thing or things are just random objects that you can use to create these light leaks. I would recommend things that will block light, translucent things, they can be plastic or glass, and then stuff that will reflect light. We'll actually be using this staple gun to create some of these light leaks. The final thing you're going to need is a dark space or a a black background now it doesn't have to be perfectly black but it's really helpful to have either a closet somewhere a dark room or having a black background works just fine now let's talk about camera settings and the lens pretty much you'll just shoot as you normally would your goal here should be to get the best possible quality you can out of your camera so I would just shoot with whatever frame rate and shutter speed you normally do and then when it comes to your ISO I would try to keep that as low as possible you could experiment with your shutter speed if you would like and of course if you're going to be slowing this stuff down a lot you might want to also shoot some slow motion motion that'll give you a little more flexibility in post. Now when it comes to the lens you can pretty much use anything but I did find that using longer or telephoto lenses seem to work pretty great so I used an 85 millimeter and I'd also recommend if you can to use a vintage lens. Newer lenses are very clinical they don't have as much flaring and all that kind of beautiful vintageness so if you can either go out and buy a vintage lens or if you have one already laying around that'll work just fine but you can really use any lens you want. I'll be using a beautiful Jupiter lens and I'll have a link to that in the description. Beautiful glass and it's going to flare and bloom really nicely. For your lens settings, you can pretty much go with anything here. I experimented with minimum focus distance as well as setting it to infinity. And then your aperture can also be adjusted to customize the look. Having it wide open kind of gives this blown out blooming effect and then stopping it down kind of sharpens things up a little bit so definitely play those settings and go with whatever floats your boat the most all right so let's go ahead and talk about actually making these things so you've got your camera set up you've got a dark background and now we can start experimenting the first thing i would try because it's super easy is to turn on a light point it at the lens and just go on the outsides of the lens that'll create a really nice flare or bloom and we'll be able to use that very nicely the next method and one that works great is taking something clear plastic glass right here I'm using a lens cleaning bottle with cleaner in it and put it in between your light and the lens this will create a really cool effect and I would recommend playing around with where the light is positioned, moving the object closer and further away from the lens. All these different tweaks will give you a ton of different looks and ways to customize your light leaks. Something else I really dug was taking reflective objects, like a lens cap that kind of shows off some light, or something with almost a chrome or mirror finish like this staple gun, and doing the same kind of thing. Just keep playing with the angles and distances of your light and your object. The staple gun actually gave me some really great light leaks, so I definitely recommend taking random stuff like this and just trying it out. Another method that gave me great results and some of my favorite light leaks was to actually put my hand in front of the lens, set the focus to infinity, and then backlight your hand. When this happens, you get that kind of red glowy color uh, of the light shining through your hand and there's blood in your hand, so you get to see that kind of red glow. And that created some of my favorite light leaks. So those are just a couple ideas and tips for making your own light leaks. Obviously there are infinite ways to create these and you could go nuts and find all kinds of different materials that would work super well. So now let's head over to the computer 
import this stuff and start overlaying it onto our footage. I'll show you how everything works there and it's really, really straightforward. What's up guys, let's knock this light leak stuff out. So I've got a bunch of shots here in Final Cut. Again, you can do this in pretty much any editor. The one thing you're going to need, just like our double exposure video, is to be able to access this compositing and change the composite mode or blend mode from normal to screen. That's the only thing you're going to need to make this work. So we have our first layer here, which is just our footage. We can grab our light leaks, drag it in. I'm going to go ahead and mute this. And we're going to drag it onto a second layer above our shot. I'm going to select it and I'm going to pull up a vector scope so we can see what's going on with exposure. This isn't necessary, but essentially whatever's black is going to disappear and be transparent and we have multiple variables that we can customize so to start I'm simply going to change the blend mode from normal to screen and just like that we have our light leak I'll turn it off and back on so you can see the difference now you'll notice we've got this kind of orangish red glow down here in the lower right corner but up here in the sky it normally should be transparent because it's black but it's kind of hazy and that's because this top layer uh, that we had before, let me change it back to normal here, doesn't truly have black, and that's due to me shooting this in log. So to correct this, we can just do a little grade on this, and you can change the colors, all kinds of crazy stuff. So what I'm gonna do is just grab the master wheel and drop it down. And now if we go back and change it from normal to screen, it's mainly just this orange glow. I can do this while it's all set up here and show you the before and after. So that is just the straight clip. And here is when we adjusted the black. So you can play with it. If you want kind of a hazy look, raise up the exposure. It's going to kind of wash everything out, which could be something you're going for. Another thing you can do is change the colors just by moving them around. Very straightforward, very easy to do. So let's go ahead and do another one. I'm gonna go ahead and kill that one. We'll go to another clip here. I'll go in and find another light leak that I like. Here's a very basic one that we started out with just by having the light go around the lens. We'll throw that over our clip. We will go in and we'll change the blend mode from normal to screen. Close all this stuff here so we can see a little better. And there you go, a nice big orangish skin colored light leak from below. Again, if it's a little too washed out, we can go in here drop the exposure or just drop the shadows a little bit and that'll make sure we don't lose contrast and if it's really really strong keep in mind you can tone all this way back if you need to so under that same compositing mode in the inspector here in final cut i can change the opacity so if i just want just a little bit of that then we can totally do that here's before and here is after just a little bit of interest there lifting up the shadows where the light leak is. Also keep in mind, you can do this with photos. You don't have to do this in video. You can take pictures or grab frames from your video light leak and overlay it over a photo and get the exact same effect. Also keep in mind, we can scale and kind of transform this if we need to. Let's say I want this light leak not coming from the bottom, but from the side. I can just rotate it or flip it. You can do all kinds of stuff. We'll go 90 degrees. I'll grab my x-axis, move it over. And another thing you can do is you can stack these. So I'll grab another light leak, overlay it over our first one. And that one's pretty intense. So I'm gonna do two things here. First, I wanna change the color. Let's make this one kind of a blue somewhere in there. I'm going to drop the shadows so it just shows that highlight there. Then we're gonna go back and we're going to take our opacity drop it down and then maybe we'll go ahead and move this one uh, let's see let's drop it down a little bit and just for the kicks of it I'm gonna add a third layer and something like that just gives you a couple ideas for things you can do to uh, customize your light leaks I'll turn it all off that's the original shot light leaks pretty intense example but you guys get the idea super straightforward and you can really customize this a million different ways and get very unique looks. So as you can see, light leaks are super easy to make 
and to use with your footage. It's just gonna add that little bit of secret sauce to kind of take your videos to the next level. Now, if you enjoy this very simple and easy to implement video technique, definitely check out my double exposure video. I did something very similar there. Really, really cool stuff. And if you haven't seen it already, I definitely recommend it. Otherwise, if you enjoy this video, there are three things you can do that'll really, really help me out. Number one, check the description for links to stuff that I used in this video. Those will be affiliated, so if you click on them, we do get a small commission at no additional cost to you, and that is always appreciated to help keep the channel afloat. Number two, we sell camera guides. So if you wanna learn everything there is to know about shooting the best possible video on your camera, check out our guides over at the Academy. We have one coming up for the brand new A7 III, and that thing is loaded with great tips. Finally, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and you'll get this stuff on the regular if you enjoy it and hitting that bell notification doesn't hurt either. That's gonna wrap this one up, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in our next video.